Hey there guys, it is Thursday, March 1st, 2012, and welcome to today's Captain's Blog. Check this out. Getting ready to be shipped out a bunch, a whole bunch of the crushed quarters going out. Fundraising in action. These are all getting shipped out. Finished product, ready to go. Every one of these is helping the Geek Group build our endowment. You should get one. There's the front. There's the back with all the science behind it. They're so cool. That is the future of the Geek Group right there. That is building our endowment, which is see, the endowment is the core funding for us. It's, it's the bread and butter funding. It's all the stupid stuff like the light bill and the phone bill and the cell phone bill and camera batteries and all that jazz and, and feeding this poor starving man who is wasting away for the price of a well, actually a really good lunch. You could, you, could, you could feed this poor, starving little man. Look at that. You can make a difference. All right, Moose, so you got something to show off for the world. I made some furniture for myself. You did? Show them what you got. I, I have the little woodworking station over here. We have a pen vise. Okay. And the drill press that I use for pens. And we even made a drawer. And look what's in here. This is all your stains and pegs and pen stuff. And yes. That's pretty cool. And this is all made from extruded aluminum. It's the Bosch stuff that was donated by KUKA. It is. And you know what's really great? What? The plywood we used was part of the pallet that the metal came on. <laughs> <laughs> so we recycled the pallet to make the tabletop. Yes. That's pretty awesome. So thank you, Jeff, for making this happen. We have now built the first of what will be many bits of things around the lab and made out of their old so guards. <laughs> I needed this really bad. So you're a happy girl now? I'm very happy. Okay. And what are you working on now? What's your current project? Uh, I'm making some soft jaws for this vise that we've got right here. Okay. We really need a vise. We've got like 12, but um, well, all of them have soft jaws. Yeah, we, we have one decent-ish vise. We've got this crappy thing. I use um, this all the time. I use it all the time too, but it's still it's still crap. And then we've got this crappy thing. These are both like drill press and milling machine vices. And then Dale just got us a big romp and new vice that is actually a quality. It's, it's a this Bessie. Is exciting. And it's got a it's a plumbing vice on top. So it's got the, the pipe holder thing. And then you loosen the side here and the whole thing flips around and you got a regular vice. So this is our big RAR hard jaw vice. So Moose is making, what, UHMW jaws? I think they're UHMW. Okay. Where's the stock you're starting with? Yeah, that's UHMW. Okay, well, it had a funny texture. Yep. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Yay! Machines like butter. Cool. So what are you working on? Continuation yeah. of paint sprayer joy? Yeah, I can finally get to the gun now. Now I'm done messing around with the actual pump. Okay. He's having so much fun. It's a thrilling day. You missed the thrilling, actually. What, what was the thrilling? Well, the most thrilling was this. Did you kill a zombie or something? Freak out Bridget probably. Just, oh, what are those? I had a bloody nose as well. Oh, okay. Um, really dry weather in Michigan, God bless it. No, we had a whole fleet of Boy Scouts in here not a few minutes ago. Okay. We've had them for a couple of hours doing stuff. They're, they're working on the cabinet things, the Omni Taco cabinets. Y yes. And we have to do some reinforcements, thanks to Omni. Um, yeah? Yeah. Did, did the dog break something? Okay. But uh, they're learning about construction, and it looks good. They're looking nice. Yeah. Cool. Why is there a pallet jack wheel sitting in the middle of the floor? Because somebody broke the pallet jack, and instead of coming to any staff member and saying, hey, I broke the pallet jack, we just moved it, and the wheel went boo. So we don't know who broke the pallet jack. All right, we'll find out. Who broke the pallet jack? Don't be a douche. If you break a tool, let us know because if somebody needs, like, if I got a need for that pallet jack, which, you know, happens often with very little notice, I need no to get the pallet jack fixed. So, yeah. What are you guys doing? Well, I tried to finish my project today, but we ran into yet another problem. What? We weren't really thinking clearly when we did the mitered edges, and we had them longer than they needed to be, so we had to pry them back off after we wood glued them and nailed them down, 
and recut them and put them back in. Okay. So we didn't get to varnishing today, so now we're gonna have to varnish tomorrow instead of um, hanging them. And now I don't know when we're gonna hang them. Okay. So, but it's back together, and you'll just varnish tomorrow. <sighs> yep, varnish tomorrow, and I don't know when we're gonna hang them. Okay. This well, was supposed to be done last Sunday. You gotta work faster. Yup. <laughs> I can't so, work. So it took twice as long and cost twice as much as you thought it would? No, no, no. Price, price is the same. That's, okay. that's the good thing. But it news. took Just twice as long. It's taking forever okay. to well, do. You'll get used to that. Well, welcome to R&D. So I see everybody appears hard at work. Hey, I busted my butt. Enos is bringing the union in. Yep, yep. Okay. I'm trying to make this a union shop, yo. Because they get so much more done. You make this a union shop and I'll burn it down. I'm <laughs> Yeah, and who do you work for? State. Thank you. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you for winning the argument for me in one word. Boom. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, haircut, hippie. I got a haircut. You look like an electrocution victim and you're giving me shit? Really? Hey. With hair like that, you're giving frizzier. me shit. It could be frizzier, but I'm It could be, but it'd require a Vandegraaff. I, we can oh, do this. Oh, Vandegraaff, you, I don't know. What you don't even know what that means, do you? But if it's bad no for your hair, then. All right. By morning, you're going to tell me who Vandegraaff is, what he invented, and why it's awesome. It's not and why, that I had and, to and study why I could make all that second. Why I could make that joke about your hair. Van de Graaff. You gotta look it up. It. Huh? Spell it. Name Spell it phonetically. He's German. Van de Graaff. There's two A's. G-R-A-A-F. Oh, two A's? Yeah, Van de Graaff. Not real phonetic. It really is phonetic. Keep giving me shit. I know how this ends, okay? <laughs> I know how this ends. It ends with you crying, me laughing, and the internet calling me an asshole. And I'm okay with that. More hate mail I've been you? an asshole before. Oh, whoa! You're a hack, though. I wore that shirt yesterday. Where? Oh, man. Yeah, that was yesterday's shirt. I love that shirt. <laughs> it's a great shirt. Van der Graaff. Okay. His toys have big rolls. <laughs> I'm going to try and beat somebody into getting something productive done around here instead of... Everybody standing around! There's shit to do. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm what, I'm if you can't work on your project, that's totally cool. You can work on one of 500 different projects around I here. I want to go home. I'm tired. Then I'm go not home. to work. No, I don't want to hear it. If okay, you're here, I'm you're going, working on something. I need to wait for him to go home because it's bad matters. Go home. Your workers have working gone. on it. No, you stand in here. If you, will you wait? Are you waiting on a ride? Good. Do you yeah. need to stand there? Do you more complaints for us? God, I got <laughs> shit. You don't even know. I got I got a prostate the size of a grapefruit. Okay. I got, <laughs> when he goes pissing tomorrow like a spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, if everybody's gonna be standing up here waiting on a ride, you could be standing around here doing like moving shit. What do you have to move? I'll, I'll move you know. into a okay. closet so I don't have to listen this, to you anymore. All this, all this needs to go somewhere. Check that out. There's something you don't get to see every day. That is core memory. Dale dropped this off, and uh, it's going to be in our museum soon. But I just wanted to take a minute and share that with you guys. That is core memory from a German calculator. It's uh, one of several such cards that were in the machine. It's the whore. And wires each select a 24-bit word from the left bank of cores and a 24-bit word from the right bank of cores. The 24-bit select lines run up and down and are driven by the row up or the row of transistors across the top of the board so that's these i'm reading the description he's he's got it right here um what else does it say when one word and one bit line turn on each bank which gives out a data pulse if the selected location contained a one ones have to be re-entered after being read out so i can't read all of dale's writing I'm trying over here but there there's what it says so that's pretty cool. That's core memory. I've only seen that once or twice before in my entire life. This is really rare stuff. But these are the little memory cores. If you have old antique computer stuff like this laying around and you want to give it a good home, I would very much like to have it here on display where we're putting our museum together. And this will go on display. Thank you, Dale. That's really awesome, sir. That's neat. That's neat stuff. So what are you working on? Uh, working on getting mono running for the signs and whatever else Bill wants to do with it. What's mono? Mono is this cool interpreter that takes 
pre-built uh, .NET code and makes it so you can run it on a Unix machine. We're only using the console-based code, so it'll be cool. Okay. It makes it uh, an easier transition for Bill so he doesn't have to learn C or anything else and we can keep kind of the code centralized between the different... You know, use the same code in multiple places. Okay. On both Windows machines and the open based machine here. How long until you be done on this? Um, I'm pretty close to being done. I've got the interpreter working. I'm dicking around with the compiler trying to get that to do everything it's supposed to. Okay. When you get it done, could you please do the uh, feed for the fiber optic down yep. to the lower net? Okay. Yeah, cool. we can drop it. Yeah, they just they need a hole. They need some fiber. I see fiber optic cable sitting over there. So. They got all, okay. All the stuff over there is for uh, art projects. Someone had overbent it. Like, oh, it's junk fiber. It's junk fiber. Okay. It, it's good enough to pass light, but not good enough to pass digital data. Light. <laughs> digital light. Digital Digital light, okay. It works in packets. It keeps, it, it's only for bad electrons. Uh, it's a day. It's just, it's, it's one of those days when I shouldn't have got out of bed because everything I touch turns to shit. If I'm having a whole day of fail. Uh, remember that mouse yesterday, the, the one that, that Corey trapped and I told Jabroni, oh hey, just go throw that away outside? Turns out, that wasn't a mouse. Several hours later, we found out Chip was missing. Chip as in Moose's hamster chip. Chip apparently got out of her cage. Corey is an idiot and can't tell a hamster from a mouse. And Jabroni and I never actually bothered to look in the box. Yeah, that's my day. So, uh, more as it happens. All right, so time is 17.37 and Dave, we forgot, because I've had like two days from hell and have not gotten to back to the viewer meal thing, so we got to measure this thing. Now this is what I know. These are on 12 inch centers, and uh, so they're, they're a foot, you can just count the damn things. But I'm going to be essential, I'm going to climb up the thing, and we'll hope it's less than 25 feet. I think it is. Well, considering the ceiling in here isn't even 25 feet. Your uh, tape measure is following you. <laughs> All right, you got the tape? Yeah, I got the tape. You got to put it at the bottom of the ladder, Dave. I'm working on it. I'm juggling your camera and the tape measure and trying not to give people seizures. I'm in position to the exact top of the ladder. What do you got? I have got... Right around 204 and like a half, three quarter. 204 and three quarter inches. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, it's that internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You can cut. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I was actually gonna step off and check this out over here. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. What's up? Fixing stuff. You fixing stuff? Mm -hmm. Clear tape? Yep. Because the stickers have issues? Yep. Okay. We may have to make fun of Matt's weak, flappy stickers. And stickers just aren't very sticky. Matt, your stickers are weak and flappy like. Mm -hmm. This is thrilling. Thrilling video. <sighs> This is our life around here when people think we're so cool. Except that piece of tape is icky. Two passes. Well, I'm going to get really close, and then I'm going to look at it more and get the okay. final one and do it slower. Okay.
try them out now? Get rid of the fuzz. Okay. The HMW is fuzzy. Alright. You happy? I don't know. Let's see. There you go. Cool. Now we got a set of soft draws. Alright. So I'll go get a screwdriver. Alright. Alright, there you have it. Moose's new soft draws. Yes. Yeah. Featuring Bolt Depot bolts! Ha! <laughs> and a scrap bit of UHMW. They were really obscure bolts, too. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's a cheap Chinese vice, so of course they're metric. Cut with an Iskar tool. They were cut with... This where, where the hell did it go? That Iskar tool. It's over here now. My favorite Iskar tool. That's your favorite? It is my favorite. Okay. You can tell. It's got a lot of love. Yes. Okay. Amy! Who is Shel Silverstein? Um, author, uh, poet, wrote a bunch of mainly children's. I don't know if she's written other stuff. It's a he. Oh, he. Yeah. I don't know. I never looked at the first one. Dave! Yeah. Yes. Who is Shel Silverstein? Mm. You don't know who Shel Silverstein Sounds is? Sounds horribly familiar. Wrote where the sidewalk ends. See, my problem is, is I know a million different songs, poems, stories, and everything in between. But the second you ask me who did that, wrote it, whatever, <laughs> let alone the title sometimes. Okay. Sometimes I don't even know titles. It was, it was a shot. Who is Shell Silverstein? Shell. Bernstein Bears? No. No. Shell Silverstein. It's his author. Huh? An author, right? What? It's a children's author. Yes. For the sidewalk. Uh, I'm not asking you yet. Wait. No, I can't. You don't know? Shell Silver. No, I'm, I'm at a loss. Okay, hang on. Enos! Yeah. Who is Shell Silverstein? He's a hell of a poet that I loved reading growing up. He made The Giving Tree, Where the Sidewalk Ends, uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, the other ones that he has. Why? What's the... Oh, you'll see. Yeah, I'm doing a thing. Oh. Doing a thing. Is this a survey? Kind of, yeah. Kind of like going to a Burger King and they ask you if you want ketchup with that. It's just a survey because they don't actually give you any. <laughs> Batman! What? Who is Shel Silverstein? Uh, the poet. Yeah, what did he do? Did the uh, Giving Tree was his big one, and then he did a couple other little books. I don't remember all of them, but yeah, he did the Giving Tree. Okay, thank you. Fix your shutters. All right. So if you go around and ask, I don't know, half a dozen people, who is Shel Silverstein? Probably everybody you ask is going to tell you, oh, he's a kid's poet. You know, he, he wrote the Where the Sidewalk Ends. Well, people don't know, and this is really cool, and you can look this up. I'm sure that Mr. Silverstein has a Wikipedia article. Is it Mr. Silverstein is actually a pretty awesome guy who not only wrote children's books and poetry and all that jazz, he's an accomplished artist. He illustrated a lot of things. He also drew comics for Playboy, and he made Johnny Cash's career with a song called A Boy Named Sue that was actually written by Shel Silverstein. And it was written about a friend of his whose name was Gene. So A Boy Named Sue is actually written around a real guy, but the guy's name was Gene. But if you ask anybody who is Shel Silverstein, they don't say, oh, he's a guy that wrote country music songs, or he's a guy that drew dirty comics for Playboy back when they were first starting out. Yeah, he hung out with Hef. Shel Silverstein is known for a very specific body of work, but he was very much a polymath who did all kinds of fun things. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I see a lot of people whining all the damn time. And it isn't, it isn't any specific person or any specific subset of people, it's everybody. And Facebook is huge for it. Whiny bitches. And it's all you guys out there that are just, oh, man, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who was cool like Caller. It's these whiny bitches. Did you like that reference? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Like, you get on Facebook and there's all these guys.
was like, I hate my job and I hate my life. And, uh, shut up, you whiny twat. Be the man you want to be. Start by being a man. Grow a pair. Quit being a whiny bitch and make something out of your life that you want it to be. Be the person you want to be. If you don't like your job, get a different job. And don't tell me there's no jobs out there. Shut the fuck up. Make one. I've built seven companies. I'm not a god. I'm not a genius. I'm just a guy. Be a god. If you don't like your girlfriend, get a different one. I don't want to hear about you whining for the 500th time about how she sucks or, I don't know, she won't whatever. There's over 50% of the population out there that are girls. There's awesome girls out there. Find a couple. Don't bitch about everything. Change it. Bitching doesn't get you everywhere. Changing it does. Be what you want to be. You only get one shot. Spending time sitting around bitching about it doesn't accomplish anything but pissing me off because I'm sick of listening to you whine. Get off your ass and go to work. Change is uncomfortable. All change is uncomfortable. Accept this as fact and move on. It sucks going to the dentist and getting that root canal or getting your tooth cap. It sucks! It's painful, it's annoying, you can go through days of like <laughs> But it'll pass. And a month later you won't even think about it. And a year later you won't even remember. Get off your ass, get off the computer. How much of your life are you pissing away on fucking Facebook? Get off the computer. Go out into the world and do something. I don't care what. Get off your ass and do something. And then post cool pictures about it instead of pictures of your cat. Nobody cares. No, trust me, okay? Pictures of your cat on the internet are like telling people about the dream you had last night. Nobody cares. I don't. They don't. They're just patronizing you and saying, oh, that's, that's fascinating. No, it's, it's really not. You're kind of a douche and nobody cares that you have dreams where, you know, you're dressed up in a banana outfit. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. It's okay. But quit bitching about it, because I'm sick of it. And I'm just going to start arbitrarily deleting your ass. And everybody else is eventually too, because they're sick of listening to your whiny ass too. Grow a pair, be a man, and go out and accomplish it. Half the fan mail I get is from people like, You're so awesome! You're bro. No, I'm not. I'm just a guy. You can be too. I'm not doing anything here that you couldn't do. I'm not a god. I don't deserve worship. I'm just a guy who will take a chance, stand up, grow a pair, and do something. You can do this. You can build a company. You can build Tesla coils and stompers and thumpers and Geminis and all the other shit we do. You can do everything I do. I am not blessed with magical fucking powers. I am not blessed with knowing everything there is to know. I surround myself with motivated, smart, passionate people that make me be a better man. Do that. It works. But it starts with getting off your ass and going out and making a change. Figure out the man you want to be. Figure out the life you want to have, the job you want to have, and go fucking do it! Because that's what people are going to remember you for. They're not going to remember that you wrote a couple country songs or that you drew dirty pictures for Playboy. They're going to remember you for what you did that made a difference. And that's why Shel Silverstein is awesome. Go out and choose the life you want and live it. And that's today's Captain's Ball. Now fuck off and go accomplish something.